thank you, Father, for today, Father. We want today to be just be something different, Father. We need something from heaven, Father. We're standing here, we're sitting here desperate, not because of what's going on out there, not because of what's going on around us, Father, but because we need the kingdom of God to erupt inside of us, Father. Too many of us are, are sitting, laying around, laying around, dry bones, dry as a bone, and God says it's time that my children will cry out, and I will prepare the way for them. I will show them the way. I will make their paths straight. Thank you, Jesus. Just show up today, Father. That's all we want. We don't care what we say. We don't care what we do. This is, not a pro this is not about a program. This is not about a man up here. This is not about a show. This is not about being entertained on a Sunday because you have nowhere else to go. This is about you showing up and meeting your children. The spirit of Elisha. The sons to the father and the fathers to the son. That's all that matters. And people are saying there's no spirit of Elisha. Well, it says in the Bible, it says that he will come in the last days and he will bring the family of God back to their parent which is Christ which is the father and we shall be renewed in the spirit of our mind and we shall, shall be taken up in the heavenlies and he shall show us things that we have not heard or eye has not seen I thank you Lord today that we would hear things that we that many in the church are not even hearing and even talking about or even knowing father I thank you Lord that you're going to bring your blueprint from heaven father Bring your blueprints from heaven, Father. Give us the word of the hour, Father. That's what we want every time we gather. We want to hear the word of the hour. It's not about 50 sermons I have laid up for the next 12 months. It's about the spirit of God speaking to his children. That's all that matters. You're taking down religious systems, Father. You're taking around, uh, down the harlot system, Father. We're no longer going to be systemized anymore. We're going to be under the king of kings and the lord of lords and the shepherd that guides his shepherds to guide the sheep, Father. Thank you, Jesus. And this message is called Awakening Prophets. The Prophets. Awakening the Prophets. And we're coming into a new era, and it's gonna, it's, there's going to be a lot of things going on coming into this new era. And one of the things that God showed me is that there's going to be new prophets arising. There's going to be true prophets arising. Everything that's going on, I'm not, I'm not, I don't, I'm not gonna, we're not talking about that. But all we're saying is, whether it goes this way or that way, it's still a new era. God is exposing things in the house of God. God is cleaning house in the house of God. Remember, the apple of his eye is his church, not a nation. And whether he makes the nation great or not, he's doing it for his people. Because we know that the, the bear is trying to come after us and trample over us. The, those, the, the controllers are trying to control us. But the only purpose of having freedom is so we can have freedom to preach the gospel. That's what it's all about. All the freedom is about being able to be able to save souls and advance his kingdom. That's what it's about. Not being, having a mask on and being in a house all day. This is what it's about. It's about the kingdom of God on earth. And that's all he came to do is to, is to save the lost sheep of Israel. And we are his church. We are his, his land. Awakening the prophets. And God has been showing me a lot of stuff and showing me a lot of things and, and, and showing me things that I've, I've been seeing and, and uh, talking to me on it and also showing me things in the spirit that are happening now that have been happening and that are going to happen. And God told me this, prophesying is only, and I posted this on Facebook if you guys are on there, prophesying is only a byproduct of what a prophet does. You see, what we have right now is we have a lot of people that are prophesying. Just because you can prophesy does not make you a prophet. Just because you can speak a word does not mean that you, you can have, you, you know, we got to exalt this guy on a big platform, give him all our riches, get, put him on, you know, this guy's show or that guy's show. All of the body should be able to prophesy. It's a gift in the body. And I know we've talked about this and Shane has talked about this, but it's time to just finally just put the nail in the coffin. That's what I really feel like has to happen now, especially with all the talk going on and everybody's focusing on, you know, everything going on with prophets and this, prophet, that. Well, guess what? God is bringing a new breed. He's bringing a new era. He's bringing a new people that we have not heard. And they may have been in the basement of Christianity, but now God is going to bring them to the light. God is going to bring the rejected prophets, just like the rejected church. He's bringing the rejected prophets and we rejected the prophets because we don't even know what a real prophet looks like. We think, like I said, prophesying. He could prophesy. He's a prophet. Now we call him Prophet Billy Bob or Prophet Bob Joe because he can prophesy. Well, I guess I better call everybody in this room a prophet because all should prophesy. And we're going to get into scriptural context where even Paul told the churches that I wish you all would prophesy. 
1 Corinthians 14, 5. I wish you all, everybody say all, all. With, with, would all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied. Was he talking to prophets? No, he was talking to the, to the Corinthian church. I wish you all would. Because why? why? He wishes he would, they would speak in tongues too, but tongues with a translator would be great too, because then we can hear the word of the Lord. But when I speak prophecy or when I speak, when I'm prophesying, I'm edifying the church and revealing the plans of God to the church. I'm revealing what I'm giving a sight and vision. God is give, gives vision to his church when he prophesies. God gives us direction. Now, that's all. Now, prophets do do this, but it's just a part of what they do. We're only scratching the surface of what a prophet really does. And because we think this one thing is what a prophet is, now when the real prophet comes, they're like, oh, he's too harsh. Oh, this one, he just wants to rebuke everybody. Every post that he does or everything that he does, every word that he has, it's all bad, all negative, all negative. Well, guess what? You're calling the, the negative ones, the, the true prophets, you're calling the negative ones. The ones that have, we have come against all, the, all these years that we have said, oh, all it is is rebuke this or cast down that or blah, 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 blah. Well, guess what? When God spoke, we're going to get into it too. God spoke to Jeremiah, the prophet, and he said, your calling is to tear down, uproot. We have apostles and prophets in the church that are called to uproot things because what happens? There are sheep among wolves. We have false prophets that have gone into the world. We have people that have come and infiltrated the church with false doctrine or false teaching and false prophecy. So a prophet judges a prophet, and the prophets, real prophets, will tell you what is of God and what is not. They are supposed to be subject to each other. But now here comes a real prophet telling the truth about what's going on and what... And, and exposing things, oh, Jesus is all about love. Jesus is all about, but wouldn't love tell you that there's a wolf in the room? Right. Wouldn't love tell you that there's, there's people among you that are trying to infiltrate you and they're fooling you and they're speaking to the vanity of your hearts? Yes. Yes. 1 Corinthians 14.31, for you all can prophesy one by one so that you all may learn and all be ex exhortated. So they say, well, the, author, the gift of a prophet is for edification only. They don't do rebuke or they don't, it's not about correction. It's not about this, about that. Yeah, the gift of prophecy may be for exhortation. Yeah, you're right. But not the office of a prophet. The office of a, of a prophet is a completely different thing now. We think just because it says prophecy or, pro, or prophesying and it looks like the same word as prophet, we put them together and say, whoa, well, prophecy must be a prophet. That's what prophets do, right? Well, guess what? If you look at all the Old Testament prophets, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, all these guys, they prophesied, they spoke the word of God straight from God, but you can see there was not many prophets in the Old Testament that spoke a great thing. They were set up. They were sent when God needed somebody to restore the gates of Jerusalem or God, when God needed somebody to, to show his people that they were serving idols or whatever. Every prophet that you see, if, now you think true prophets today are negative? Go read. That's why most people won't even read the Old Testament is because when they read it, they feel negative. But it was a prophet right before you. But because everybody, and God showed me this, how, how, how this, 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 the church today, and, not, and, and, and like, we're not, like we're not condemning the bride here. We're bringing instruction to the bride and correction to the bride. And we say, they say it's not love. Well, guess what? God is love. So if I don't bring correction when God tells me to, you're going to be you're going to stay away from God. God's not going to even cuz he wants a holy, not a profane people. He doesn't want holy and profane things mixed. So they say, "Oh, but it's all about love." But God says, "Yeah, but these are the two commandments. Love God and love your neighbor. But I can't love God if I don't obey God." He says, "I want it this way. I want things that way. I want things this way." And but we say, "Well, we want the love without all that." Well, guess what? You you can't love God. You're just, it's a superficial love, like, oh, I love the idea of God, I love the name of God, I love the good things that he does, but we really don't love God if we don't love the severity and all the other things and, and the hard things that may sound hard to us, but they're really just to get us on, on the right path. It says, who I correct, I love. The re rebuke is love, correction is mercy, really. And we need, and God is pouring out the fear of the Lord and the conviction of God on the church like never before going forward, and that's the only way True prophets are even going to survive in the church today. 
Because if people have hard hearts, if people don't want to give into conviction, if people don't want to hear, don't, if they feel like they always want to hear a soft word, they're not going to hear prophets. Because prophets will always sound negative to them. It's all about the taste of their ear. They only want to hear good things. Like Ahab, he's, God sent Micah to him. Or what, is his name Micah, right? Micah, or what, he sent a prophet to Ahab. And he said that he, he, he rejected that prophet because he only wanted to hear a good thing. But God was giving Ahab the word of the Lord to him. After Ahab repented, Ahab even repented to God. And God said to Samuel, look how he has repented. And then Micah came and, oh, no, I, but I don't want to do that. Oh, no. And then God, and then he's like, where's, where's my other prophets? And then guess what God did? God put a lying spirit in their mouth. And God has even expo he exposed Ahab just like how he exposed Ahab back then. He's exposing the church now because most of the church just wants to hear a soothsayer. Most of the church just wants to hear somebody that's going to entertain their flesh. And you know what? We don't even realize what even a false prophet is. Do you know that? We think of false, and we're going to get into all, it's going to be all, I got all these scriptures here. I don't even know what's really happening, but I'm just following the Holy Spirit. But, you know, all these, all these guys in, in, the, in the word, they think, everybody thinks that just because a person speaks a word and it, it, it's off, they're a false prophet. But God says, no, it's deeper than that. It's deeper than that. It's the prophet that speaks to you what he wants. It's the prophet that speaks to you because he wants your money. It's the prophet that's trying to merchandise you. It's the prophet that speaks the vanity of the heart and the dreams and visions that he made up. Do you know that the Bible says in the Old Testament that there was prophets that, and, and it says, don't dream the dreams of your own dreams. Don't come, people start, people want something so much or they want to hear, they want God to say this or say that. See, we should be open to God. We should be like, God, I just want to know what you want. Not what I want, not making you do what I want. And because they try to make God do what they want, the devil comes with a lying spirit and puts it in and, it's, and they start thinking it's God. I had a dream. And even the Bible, I was reading a verse this morning. And it says, when they come to you and they say, I had a dream, I had a dream, reject them. Not people that just have dreams, but people that are dreaming dreams for the sake of lust, to fulfill everybody else's wants. And even Baal, he was being tempted by the king to curse the Israelites, prophesy against the Israelites. From them. They were coming out of the wilderness. They were coming in to take over the land. Prophesy against them, curse them. And he said, I cannot do it. And that's what many want them to do. Many want them to say, prophesy over that. Do that. Say that for me, please. And, there's, and we have prophets that are doing exactly what people want. Well, because they want to, it's all about their platform. It's all about their riches and, and, and popularity. Well, guess what? God's new prophets are not going to be about popularity. They're not going to be about likes. They're not going to be about money. They're, they're, they're not going to sell a thing. God is raising up a new breed for a new reason. And his reason is because he's tired of everybody seeing his church and his prophets and, and, and being disgraced by what they see. It's honestly a disgrace what's going out there. What's going on out there. But in God's mercy and love, he's bringing his... He doesn't have to do this. He can just end it right now if he wants to. He doesn't have to do it. He doesn't have to bring revival. He doesn't have to bring his true church. He doesn't have to do it. He could just end it right now and just take the ones who are serving him now. But because he wants to save the multitudes. And now God is getting people tired of everything they're seeing out there. You notice how everybody, have you noticed out there that everybody's just tired of what's going on? Not just out there in the systems. I'm talking about in, out there and even in the church. Everybody's just tired and people are going church to church because they just want to find somewhere that's authentic and real. And really from the kingdom of God. And they feel like they go places and even you have to go places and spit the bones out because they say they speak the word of the Lord and there's nice things, the presence is there, but then there's this and then there's that. And God wants to raise up a spot without bride or, or, or uh, without wrinkle or spot. He doesn't want there to be all these things that people get offended with where there's flies in the anointing. Many people, many houses have the anointing, but they have flies around it. You know what God told me the flies are? The flies are the lies. God says that all these little things, all these little doctrines that they throw in, it's all, it, leavens, it leavens up the whole thing. You ever go to some place and you hear it's a prophesying, speaking the word of God, everything's good, the service went good, it's whatever, everything you expected, but then somebody gets up and says and speaks this stuff and it's from another spirit or it's from another uh, 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 type of bread that's not from heaven and it just messes you up. A little leaven leavens the whole bread. Now, pe people run away from churches, even if they have the presence of God, even if they have words from God, because it's that little leaven that comes in and just, it just turns you off. And, and God is sick and tired of it, and his people are sick and tired of it, but God's raising up a new breed. 
And they, just because people, somebody is in a building doesn't mean they're religious. It's about the spirit of, of truth that's in the building. It's about the presence of God is in the building. That's all I care about is when I assemble with the saints, is God taking over the service. People call, call the Holy Spirit all the time. Oh, Holy Spirit, come into our, take over our service, blah, 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 blah. I don't want to speak that unless it's, um, it's happening. I want, it to, I want to speak that and mean that. I want that to really happen. I don't want to just speak it in vain because I want to seem, well, hey, they got the Holy Spirit. And then people walk out to the church. They got the Holy Spirit in there. Yeah, because the guy said it. But was the Holy Spirit really moving and doing what he wanted to do? Was the Holy Spirit really pleased? But was the Spirit being quenched? Many are quenching the Holy Spirit. Many are doing things, they're doing everything that God tells them, but then there's that little 10% that they don't do, and it quenches the Holy Spirit. God wants the whole 100, he wants 100%. Luke 1, 66 through 68. And all they that heard them laid up in their hearts, saying, What manner of child shall this be? And the hand of the Lord was with him. And this is talking about John the Baptist and his, and his parents and all that. And when God showed him what their kid's name was going to be, and everybody wanted it to be Zechariah. And then the so mom said, No, his name is going to be John. And then the father was praying in the temple, and he was tearing there for a while. And then he came out and said, And he wrote, and, he, and he, they said, Get him aboard or something like that. And he wrote, and he said, His name is going to be John. And the people were in awe. But then watch this, 67. And his father, Zechariah, was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now was Zechariah, John's father, a prophet? Was John's father a prophet? I'm not talking about the prophets of old. I'm talking about John's father, just his dad. Was he a prophet? No. Now everybody in here, you know, if you prophesy, are you, are you a prophet because you can do that? And prophesied, saying, Blessed be the Lord God of Israel, for he that visited and redeemed his people. Prophesied, spoke the word for the next great prophet that was going to enter the land, John the Baptist, but he's not a prophet. Wow. One of the biggest events in Bible history was prophesied by a person that is not a prophet. And what makes you think that you can't do big things just because you're not a prophet? Doing big things doesn't, isn't concealed in having a five-fold ministry title. We're all supposed to do big things. He, Moses said, you know, I wish all you guys were pro or prophets. I, I wish all you guys were touched by his hand. He wasn't saying that, you know, I wish you guys were all prophets in the sense of, like, the office and all that. He was saying, I wish you all could hear from God like the prophets. I wish you all could speak and say the oracles of God. And now here we are, and the Spirit is upon us. The Spirit is upon everybody in the church and, and, and that are uh, collectively Submitted to the body of Christ and submitted to the Holy Spirit. And here we are. We have a shadow of, of prophecy, but that doesn't mean we're prophets. See, we need to get this in the church. God is going to rattle the church and people are going to start to recognize that some of the people that are out there are not who they say they are. And even if they can be, speak an accurate word, doesn't mean, now let's listen to them because this is the apostles and prophets in the land. John 2.28 it will come about after this, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. You know this one. And your sons and daughters will prophesy. Pour out my spirit on all. Everybody say all again. All, all flesh. And your sons and daughters shall prophesy. And your old men will dream dreams. Your young men will see visions. Just because a guy can put his dream on Facebook doesn't mean he's a prophet now. And even if it comes to pass, great. We needed it. See how big that is? You, you don't have to be a prophet to do big things in the kingdom of God and, show, and lead God's people. We got to get this. And we're going to get, we're going to see what the mark of a prophet, you want to know the mark of a prophet? And we're going to know, uh, know how a prophet really moves and what he entail, entails his office and what it really looks like. We need to know this because we keep running away from the prophetic mantle and we don't even know. But we think we're submitting to it because I'm hearing all the words out there. I'm hearing everything about 2021 and 2022, you know, I'm listening to the prophets. No, you're not listening to the prophets because you don't even want to be rebuked and correct. You don't even want religion to come out of you. You don't even want to be set apart from the flesh. You see, prophets, their main thing, God has given them a vengeance after the flesh. Not a vengeance after you, not to come after you, but to come after the very thing that's entangling you. To come after the sin that so easily entangles us. Prophets are here to devour everything that calls, that calls itself God that is not of God, and they're here to exalt. They're here to help 
you come out of your flesh, come out of the old things, come out of the things that have been making you go around the mountain. But we reject them. When the prophetic mantle comes up, see, the apostle moves in all five, all five of the fivefold ministry gifts. And an apostle, you know, sometimes I see how an apostle can preach and teach and build, give, be giving encouraging words, but when that prophetic mantle starts to move upon them, everybody's like, oh, no. No, 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 no. Don't, don't start telling me about what needs to get delivered in me, what needs to come out of me. You go back to that building stuff. Go back. Talk about faith, man. Talk about faith and, you know, about the good stuff. But then when, when he comes, when the word of rebuke comes, when the word of the Lord comes, get right, make your way straight. Oh, see, in the church, we're rejecting the prophetic mantle, and we don't even know it. Because we're rejecting the sword of the word of God. Even Jesus said to the seven churches, if you do not get this right, I will come in war with the sword of my mouth. Your, your Savior said that. When he said to those that, the ones that were tolerating Jezebel, the ones that were lukewarm, the ones that were dead, I will war against you with the sword of my mouth. What is the sword? It's the word of God. But we don't want to hear that word that comes against and breaks the altars of Baal and breaks the altars of Jezebel. Jezebel. And breaks all these things and tells us that we're, and shows us the way of life out of the death. We want, see, we want life without death, but Jesus can never get to life unless he faced death. He can, never get to, he can never get out of the grave unless he faced the cross. And many of us don't want to go on the cross. We just want to just get there and, you know, after the, we want the three days to be over. We don't want our flesh to suffer anymore. And then the prophets come and we feel like, oh, he's condemning. Oh, he's hurting my, yeah, he's hurting your flesh. Now let, it, let the flesh be torn off. You see, you know, God, what God told me, we were praying here a couple, a couple nights ago or whenever it was, and God told me that some of us in the body of Christ all abroad, some of us aren't even a dry pile of bones. We're asking God to raise up the dry bones, but God says some of them are not even a, a pile of bones yet. Some of them still have the old flesh on there, and they're calling the bones, but God says, no, they need to be, they need to be, asked, they need to be asking for repentance and conviction. Because if we don't get the flesh off, if we don't be crucified with Christ, we'll never be risen with Christ. We need this flesh to come off. And then when the bones come, you're going to see a new man come upon the person. You're going to see the, the man or woman become alive in Christ and speak the oracles of God, living waters coming out of them. If living waters aren't coming out of you, if you're not moving in, this, in the spirit of God like it says you are in the Bible, it's, there still needs to be flesh torn off. Death brings life. See, we're always so focused. God even showed me we're always so focused on obedience, but we can't fulfill our obedience until our disobedient heart gets out of the way. God, God is tearing down, using his prophets, a prophetic mantle to tear down the flesh that's on our heart that keeps us from having a soft heart, a heart of flesh. You know what a soft heart is? A soft heart is a heart that feels God. You see, flesh can feel, right? When you have flesh, you can feel. And when he meant by the heart of flesh, he was saying, the heart that can feel me, that can know me, that can touch me. But many have a heart of stone and they don't even know God. They don't even feel God. They don't hear him because their heart is blocked off. Their heart is hard. And the prophets are here to tear up the ground, break up the hard ground. The Bible said, and when he said they want, you know, when they always cried out for revival and God to come, you know, the, many of the prophets would always be like, break up your fallow ground. Break up the ground so the water can come out of the ground. Break up the ground so that there would be no more dryness. You're, you're experiencing dryness whether you have a hard ground. This is not a, a, a condemning word. This is not to come against anybody. This is not a, or this is just, this is, you know what? Rebuke and correction are really the, the things that are going to get you edified in the church. We think if, yeah, okay, we need to hear about our destiny and what's going to happen, but we don't need to hear it every two seconds when the cross is waiting for us. One of the things that we need to die to keep stopping our destiny. Yeah, I want my destiny. Yeah, I want to be, to be a new man in Christ. Yeah, I want to do this and do that. But I need to get me out the way. And it's not a condemning word. because Everybody thinks, because we've heard all, we've heard all these false preachers, they say, well, if you're not, if you're sinning, if you're messing up, if you're blah, 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 you're not a Christian. You're not born again. And we've been told we're not born again over and over and over because we have a flesh. But God says, my people are going through deliverance. My people are going through the wilderness. The wilderness is, is your path of deliverance. See, they came out of Egypt, the Israelites, but Egypt didn't come out of them. We, need, we, need the, we came out of the world. Yes, we're set apart. Now we're, 
we're, we're his, whatever, we're a, a citizen of heaven, all that's great. But we need to get the world out of us now. We need to be in this world, but not of this world. And many of us are still of this world, telling ourselves that we're not of this world. But we are still. The ways we think, I'm not even, you know, when we talk about our flesh, when we talk about sin and all this stuff, we think about just the things we do in the flesh, you know, it's all about, it's really what it's about to God is the heart. When he was looking for David, he was looking for the heart. He didn't care about the statue. He didn't care how polished he was. He didn't care what he was doing right or wrong. He cared about the rightness of the heart. If your heart is right, your flesh will be dead. That's what we're trying to kill. We're trying to kill the intentions. The prophets are coming after the intentions, the agendas. They're draining the swamp in the church. They're draining the mindsets, the religious thinking and ways that we've had for so long. And, it's, and, God's, and God is sending his Calvary from heaven in to take us back to Calvary. He's taking us back to the cross. There's another message I had that I was going to preach, and maybe I'll preach it next week. But God says his church needs to return back to the cross. You want revival? Well, then you need to let death come. You need to die first, and then you'll be revived. What is a, who, who, who gets revived? When you're in a hospital and people get revived with the thing, what happens? They're dead. So they need to be revived. But some people aren't even dead, so they can't be revived. The church isn't dead, so there's no revival. The church needs to die. And we talk about dying all the time, but we want to die in our own way or pretend we're dying. God told me there's people, there's two types of people in the church. And, you know, sheep, whatever, that call themselves, well, I'm not even going to say, because they're sheep that just, they're just ignorant. They're just rebellious, whatever. We can't just say that everybody in the church, just because they have flaws, they're not of God. Or they're goats. Or a prophet misses a word that he's a false prophet. Now, I'm going to get into that because many read that scripture wrong. And some of, some of them are just, have the gift of prophecy and they're speaking a word, but because they just have the gift of prophecy, they have, there's, they have room for error. Where prophets are supposed, are they, they're supposed to be a, a cleansliness to their canal. He's taking us back to the cross. One Corinthians twelve ten to another the working of miracles to another prophecy to another distinguishing see to another prophecy to another distinguishing of spirits to another speaking in various tongues and still another interpretation of tongues these are supposed to be amongst you right now. You know some of us won't even prophesy we won't even speak the word of the Lord that God has given us or a dream because we say well I'm not a prophet so I can't do that you know I'm not I don't want everybody to think too highly of me no you're robbing the church of the food the manna from heaven. So what if you're not a prophet? Aaron, God still used Aaron to, to help lead Moses lead the Israelites. And God wants to lead you. He wants to give you dreams and visions and signs and wonders. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, and they will all help raise up the church in some way or, show, or form. You don't have to be an apostle or a prophet or a teacher or an evangelist or pastor to help raise up the church because it said that all these gifts, the gifts of help, the gifts of healing, are all to help the church be raised up. Even the, the, the gift that we seem is so low or so not needed is really so needed because and it helps raise up the church you know we have you know you look at all these guys you look at the prophets and apostles and you're like oh they're the big guys in the church they're the big shots they're the guys that get all the words and blah 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 but the minute some guy has a gift in the body and it may be a small gift and they don't use it then here comes an apostle or prophet and they have to and mostly apostles because apostles move in all of them they have to come away from what they're doing from their building See, if the prophet is not in line, the apostle now has to come do the prophet's job. And now, here we are, being delayed again. If the gift of helps is not helping, well, guess what? The apostle has to start helping now. Whatever that looks like, I'm not going to go into that. Or the gift of, of, of whatever. Somebody has a healing gift, somebody has that. Now the other man of God has to come and do it. But if we all moved in the body, how great would that be? If everybody was doing their part, and how fast and how hard would we go press towards our destiny? But God said he will do it. It's not doom and gloom until God says he has his church that he will raise up, that will have no spot or wrinkle, that, will, that the gates of hell will not prevail against. This is your prophecy. This is your word to know when it's the end, when God has raised up his church. When God has raised up a people that are set apart and set away from the beast. The woman coming out of the wilderness with the 12 stars around her head. The man child that will be raised up. That all hasn't, is happening. It hasn't been done yet, so don't think it's the end. We need to stop losing hope. In the, you know why we lost all hope? Because we, we're still listening to all these people out there that are not even, they, some of them are not called by God. Some of them just have a gift of prophecy. Some of them, and, you know, and some of them are prophets, but 
they just missed it now. Or, or they may have missed it or they missed that. Like I said, I'm not getting into that. It's not, that stuff is not even over yet. I'm not, I'm not going to go into all that, those details. But some of, them, some of them are being exposed and some of them are, are just, they, they missed the, they miss the prophecy or they missed something or they missed that. And it even says in 1 Kings 13 how there was a prophet. And he was sent by the, he, was, he went to a city and he rebuked the whole city. God moved on him and whatever. And then he comes and he passes by an old prophet's house. And the old prophet comes out and says, you're supposed to stay with me a night. And the prophet says, oh, but God told me, don't stay anywhere. To keep moving. You can look at this. 1 Kings 13. Read it tonight. And he was a prophet. The old man was a prophet. But then the old prophet says, no. And the angel just came to me because his instruction was to keep going. An angel just came to me and told me that you were supposed to stay with me a night. And then the man decided to submit to the other prophet. Remember, our prophets are supposed to be judging each other's prophet's word and trusted him. And he stayed the night, and the next morning he was devoured by a lion. Devoured by a lion. Because of a real prophet at one time, but now got off. See, we need to, it says that we need to know these things by the Spirit. It says, test the spirits, that you will know whether they are from God or not. See, you can be in front of somebody that is of God, but there's a spirit that is not of God that has infiltrated their mind or heart, and now they're off. Prophets can get off. Apostles can get off. You can get off. You can prophesy something that's maybe off. It's okay. Now we're here to restore you in the spirit of meekness. God is in the, in the restoring business. Doom and gloom does not mean you're a prophet. It just means you're a fear monger. See, we have these guys over here that just, they think just because they have a gift of prophecy, they can prophesy, you know, think they're a prophet. And then we have these guys over here, you know, also over here that are, you know, then we have false prophets. We think everybody thinks they're are real prophets. And then we have these guys on this side that are, they think because they're preaching the John the Baptist way and they're preaching the hard word and they're rebuking everything they see and they're saying these condemn they are prophets now. Many of them think they're prophets, these, these cessationalists. And, and all, these, all these people that just, they feel like if they're preaching the hard word, like Isaiah and all these guys, they think because they're preaching like John the Baptist, they're prophets now. But God just told me, all these, and, and the doom and gloom too, they think, well, I saw an asteroid coming and I saw this, and you better repent because a wave is going to take over Florida. Yeah. I rem you remember that? A wave is going to, tidal wave is going to just, you better, somebody was telling you, you better leave Florida right now. Because in a year it's over, and a year came, I'm still here. I'm still standing on Florida soil. That was five years ago. God, is, God is, is, is teaching his church how to decipher what is of God and what is not. And you know what? False prophets are not going to go away, but God is going to raise up his church to where they're going to know who's who. Nobody, not many people in the church today know who, even who's who amongst them or who they're hearing even on TV. But God is going to shut down their system. See, the religious system was still there. The seven heads were still there in the book of, in the book of Revelation. But they, were, they came out of the system. Come out of her, my people. Because the spirit and the bride no longer, the, bride and the, the voice of the bride and the bridegroom no longer exist in her. Even though God may have moved in it, in the system, may have used the system at times, may have talked through people that are in the system, now he's coming to a time where he's saying, come out of the system because now I'm going to cease from there. Now my presence is going to cease from there. Now my oracles are going to cease from there. Now my word is no longer going to be heard in them. But you will have to find a remnant. You will have to actually buy real oil. And you can't buy the ones who have oil. You have to buy your own. Because their oil will only last you a day and get you in the spirit for a day, but not till the end. You have to endure to the end. You have to overcome. You have to walk your walk. But the body of Christ is here to help you be fitly joined together so we can walk this walk and finish together. But then... You know, you got these guys in the doom and gloom, but then there's the real prophets that are like, yes, this is right, yes, that's right, yes, that's right, but we're not, you know, not going to just prophesy and just say good words and swell words and, and dreams and visions, and we're not just going to come with these hard words. No, we're going to speak what thus saith the Spirit of God. Whatever his heart is thinking, or whatever his mind is thinking, whatever his heart is feeling, we're going to feel it, we're going to think it with him, and we're going to move off that. Amen. That's what real prophets do. And when you receive a prophet, you receive a prophet's reward. You know what God showed me is a real prophet's reward? A real prophet's reward is to hear from God. 
to know God, to be in his presence. That's what a prophet wants. He's only doing what he wants because he wants to be closer to God. And that's your reward, is to have more anointing, more oil, to be closer to God, to know him. That's what prophets are doing. They're bringing us close to God. Because God, it says that the pro, the, the, he will exalt the humble. And what is the other one? He will, he will what is it? resist the proud. So many of us have many. You know what's a, another big problem in the church is pride. And whether we have a little bit of it or not, there's parts of our hearts that block, that, make, that God just feels like he just has to resist. And God will move sometimes, but God still, he doesn't like the pride. It's like a, a bad stench to him. And then, he's, then it starts to grow. Like a, like a little bit of leaven, it starts to grow and take over the whole heart. And you don't even realize that you're fully, you're just a, a big head, airhead. And God's like, I'm going to pop that balloon right now. Why, hey, prophet, get away from that needle, man. Get that needle away. That's condemnation. No, no, I'm going to pop your head so God can give you the, 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 the mouth, the head that speaks from God, the seven, the, the, to speak against the seven heads. To speak, against, to speak against the seven mountains. I'm going to give you a head like flint. That's what I'm going to give you. you. Better pop that head you got. Luke 4, 16 through 29. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up and read. And there he was delivering on him the book, the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Because he hath anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, preach deliverance. We're going to skip down. And all the eyes were on him in the synagogue and were fasting on him. And began to say unto them, This is the day the scripture fulfilled your ears and all bear witness. And wondered at the gracious words which proceeded out of his mouth. And they said, Is this not Joseph's son? Is this not the, guy, the carpenter guy? And he's trying to tell us. And he said unto them, Ye will surely say unto me this proverb, Physican, heal thyself. Whatsoever we have heard and done in Capernaum, we also do, do here in thy country. And he, he said, Verily I say unto you, No prophet is accepted in his own country. It's funny how we can receive an Indian guy and not receive prophets that are from America. But really, our own country is the, is the land called the church, and the church won't receive its own. They'll receive somebody that's a soothsayer across the street. They'll receive somebody that just tells them swell words that are not even of God. They're not even of this land. They're false prophets, but we'll receive them because they speak what our flesh wants. No prophet is accepted in his own country. And God told me, this is a, one, one mark of a real prophet. Is he is not accepted. He's rejected. His word is hated by many. You want to be a, you want to, you, everybody wants to be an apostle, a prophet of God? Well, get ready to be rejected. Get ready to, ready to be hated. But I'm telling you, there's coming a day where they're going to receive the prophet's word. All these years, the real prophets have come out, real apostles have come out, and people have, only few people have received their words. And I'm not, I'm not saying two people or three people. I'm saying out of seven billion people, or however many we have on this earth, only so many of, of that seven billion has really received the true apostles and prophets' word. And that's why they haven't received the prophet's reward because and gotten closer to God and haven't got more oil because they don't receive. And some, out of jealousy, will know who is an apostle or prophet, but out of jealousy, because they want to be like them, like Korah wanted to be like Moses, won't hear their word either. Oh, I know he's a prophet. Just say it in secret. Don't tell everybody that he's a prophet because I want them all to come to my church. I want them all to hear my words. And God was telling me as I was pulling in here this morning that the new, these, new, these prophets and apostles that have been hidden from the mass uh, sight, they are gonna be, they're going to have humility around them. There's not going to be any pride. They're not going to want to be seen by men. God said their strength is going to be in their weakness. They are going to be like a mourning bride for the, but for the church. They are going to mourn. They're going to mourn not, in the, not just with tears, but but have this aching and this, this groaning for the church to come on to where they're supposed to be. And you will know them because they won't even want to take a dime from you. They, won't, they, won't want you, they don't want you to pay for their books, for their CDs. They don't want, all they want is for you to walk like Christ, talk like Christ, and come on to the full stature of Christ. That's all they want from you. Because what happens to you is what happens to them. What happen, where you go is where they go because their burden is you. What's, what's, what's entangling is their, you is their burden. 
and their yoke. And they have a yoke strapped around them. They have a burden strapped around them. And whatever you go through, whatever that the devil takes you under, they go under it too. That they may come and deliver you. That they may come and take the burden off of you because God won't take the burden off of them until it comes off of you. And they didn't get the burden because you got entangled. They get the burden because they're called to deliver you. And God won't let them have their joy until you have your joy. This is the call of a prophet. This is the, even the call of an apostle especially. They could be doing everything right with God, not falling out with God in the right place, but God will put a burden on them. They will put a yoke on them because of love, because of you. And, and, real, and people mostly don't even realize that. What real apostles and prophets go through, they don't even realize the things that they're going through at night, how they can't even sleep. Not because of something they did wrong, but because he's called, they're called to awaken you. They're called to lead you. Moses was, was fine with God. I mean, of course, until the whole rock thing. And he spoke, he hit the rock instead of speaking to the rock. I'm not going to go there. But God, he still, he had a burden for the people. It was aching his heart. The hearts of the people ached his heart, and that's how a true prophet will be. His, the heart of the people will ache his heart. You can see that through Isaiah and Jeremiah, all these guys. It bothered them what was going on in their land. And they had this zeal. They had this, this thing like, I can't, I can't stand the, the, that Jerusalem, that Israel is in a heap of ruins. I can't stand what's going on, the idols that they're serving. You can go through all those books all day, and that it'll go out all day. They're mourning over the church over the people of God. And even Nehemiah, a shadow of an apostle, his, he had this zeal, like, I want to restore the, the walls of Jerusalem. I want to bring the church back to where it needs to be. This is the, that's the mark of a, even a true apostle and prophet right there. They just want the vision of the church. They want the vision of the church. They want the people of God to be risen up from the dead. And then what did they do to Jesus after that? After he read that, and he said there's no prophet in their country. They kicked him out of the synagogue. Many prophets over the years have even been, I know, I know definitely one for sure. We all know one for sure that was kicked out here in Florida. And there will be, there, many of them have been kicked out of synagogues, been kicked out of Bible studies, kicked out of Facebook calls or, or, or the comment section, whatever. Because a real prophet is not accepted in his own land amongst his own people. John 5, 56 through 69. And he that eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood dwelleth in me, and I in him. As the living Father hath sent me, and I live by the Father, so he that eateth me, even he shall live by me. That is the bread which came from heaven, and not your fathers did eat of means, but are dead. He eateth the bread that shall live forever. These things said in the synagogue as he taught in Capernaum. Many therefore his disciples, when they heard this, they said, Isn't this a hard saying? And this is what many people say about the prophetic mantle, isn't this hard? Isn't this too tough? Isn't, why does he always got to come with the sword at me? But you don't understand, God designed this gift to do that. Oh, this guy, every time he talks, it's like tearing me up. Every time he talks, it's like a, one of those things that, you know, before they pave the ground, it's getting all the pavement off the ground. Why does it? But if you would submit, there would be joy that would come after the morning. If you would submit from, and, and you would hear their words, where, they, where they're trying to tear out the fear of the world in you, you will have the fear of the Lord in you. When you would submit and you let them tear out the knowledge and the wisdom that you think you have that is from the, from the world or from religion, you will actually get real wisdom and knowledge. They're here to tear out the revelations from man so they can give you the revelations from God. Then here come apostles building, prophets tearing down, apostles building, the tiller and the filler. The one that tills the ground and the one that fills it with seed, the word of God. And God reigns. One man sows and another went, a man waters it. And his, this is, the, this is what God, how God has designed it. We're the ground. Our hearts are the ground. We have to let it be tilled. There's no way that we can let these seeds of the word of God be done in us. There's no way that we can get the rain from heaven. If, we, if there's no rain, if there's no seed, there's no rain. And if there's no torn up ground, there's no seed. See, the ground has to be torn up, and this is the process that you're going through right now. It's the prophetic mantle. I'm not even just talking about prophets. I'm talking about, because even in apostolic ministry, for a moment, the prophetic mantle can come upon a person and bring a word of rebuke or a word of reprove or whatever. 
Or the prophetic mantle will come, up, will, the apostle will start to move in it. Or God will come by his spirit. And every time a prophet speaks or teaches, he will, you, it will always feel like it's talking about you. But he's not, he may not even be talking about you at all. He may not even know you. But it's there to convict you. That's why it feels like that. And people say, that people leave the church, oh, he's talking about me, he's offended with me. He's... No, this is the gift. This is the mark of a prophet. I'm not talking about somebody who condemns. I'm talking about somebody that brings the word of the Lord by the Spirit. Many, therefore, of his disciples, when they heard this said, this is a hard saying, who can hear it? When Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured, he said unto them, does this offend you? Many get offended. What if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he saw? The Spirit quickeneth, the flesh profiteth nothing. The prophets are here to get rid of the flesh that profits nothing. Your flesh is going to profit you nothing. In fact, it's going to decline your profit. A prophet gets rid of the wrong, that gives, gets you in the prophet. The prophet from God, the, the, the ascension that comes upon you from the descending of the kingdom of God upon you. You start to profit in the kingdom of God. But we have to get rid of those things that are not profiting you. They're here to tear down ideas of man, doctrines of man, and you will hear them talk about doctrines and come against words and things that have been hearing, and God has them inclined to hear what others are saying and what's going on, not because they're here to just judge everybody, but they're here to make sure that the sheep aren't hearing a lie. And they're gatekeepers and watchmen. Nehemiah, the shadow of the apostle, was building the walls, and he had watchmen. We're all called to be watchmen in a sense. We're all called to watch our heart, watch for Jesus coming. But then there's watchmen that watch over your soul, that are called to your soul, the government of God. They're called to help govern you into the things of God and govern you out of the things of man. Not govern you, Lord, over you, but lead you, show you, provide for you, impart gifts to you. Apostles will impart gifts to you, and prophets will take away the things that the flesh tries to come in the way with. All the blockage, all the roadblocks, all the stumbling blocks, the prophetic mantle is here to take it out. And he said, therefore, he said unto them, no man can come unto me except it were given unto him by the Father from the time many disciples went back and walked no more with him. That's John 6, 6, 6. And the disciples no longer walked with him. Not the 12 disciples, because then he goes on here and they say, then Jesus said to the twelve, will ye also go away? Remember twelve, the apostolic, the twelve apostles that stayed with the chief cornerstone? Then Simon, Simon Peter answered, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life. See, people that are going to receive these mantles are the people that just want, they genuinely just want eternal life. They want to be, they want to be just further with God. There's no hidden agenda. But the people, the goats that have agendas, that have intentions, that have things that they have an ear for sugar, they won't receive the salt of the earth. You ever eat something that's sugary and then somebody gives you a piece of meat with salt on it? It's like, ugh, ugh. That was crazy things going on in my mouth. And it's bitter to them. But if you get rid of the sugar, if you get rid of the sugar-coated gospel, then you'll receive the real gospel. See, the real gospel sounds hard, but it brings you into life. Anybody who's actually submitted to the real gospel, submitted to the real cross, submitted to the real words from God, they know that when they submit it, it may sound hard, it may hit the flesh. Because when Jesus was on the cross, didn't it hurt? Didn't the nails hurt when they went in his hands? And the nails are gonna, may hurt when they go in your hands, but it's going to be amazing when you just let the last breath go. Because you know on the other side it's resurrection of life. See, I, wanna, I learned that when death actually, when I understand this, that death really means life in the kingdom of God, I start to look to want to die to myself because I know that the, the next minute, once I repent, once I drink his blood and eat his flesh, I'm back in the glory. But we go on and on and on. Oh, God, why? But, but, but this, and we try to justify things, and but this, but that, but that. But it says in the word, everybody does that. It says in the word here, though, give in to the conviction of God. Let your heart be pricked. If it's pricking your heart, that means God is trying to get you to repent. We believe you are the Son of God. Jeremiah 1, 9 through 17. 
Then the Lord put forth his hand and touched my mouth, and the Lord said unto me, Behold, I have put my words in thy mouth. This is a prophet Jeremiah. See that I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out. Here's the calling of a prophet. To root out, pull down, and to destroy, and to throw down, and to build, and to plant. There is the calling of an apostle and prophet. Especially because today we're talking about a prophet. To tear down, to uproot, to take the things out of the ground that the enemy has planted, that man has planted, so that it can be clean and, 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 and uprooted ground. There would no, be no more hardness. Come, they have come to break the hardness of the heart. That a heart would be a heart of flesh and soft and pure. They're bringing purity to the bride, they're bringing righteousness to the bride, and they're bringing holiness to the bride. Three pillars of things that God has the prophets moving in. They, they tear down the altars of Baal, and they take Jezebel out of the church, and they conf they're confrontational with the enemy. Every time the spirit of religion comes in their presence, they will confront it. Oh, what does he got to do? No. He's called to do this. She's, whatever, Who's, whoever's called to do this, they will do it. To throw down, to build, and to plant more over the word of the Lord came unto him, Saying, Jeremiah, seest thou, I see a rod in, of an almond tree. Then he said, Thou hast seen well, for I hastened to my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto him a second time. What do you see now? Seeing a pot, the face thereof toward the north. Then the Lord said unto him, Out of the north evil shall break, break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north. And what's north? The kingdom of God? What's south? The kingdom of Satan? But it's not, we're not talking, we may not, we're probably not even talking about kingdoms in the flesh. Kingdom of the north, kingdom of the south. They have come to war against each other. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdom of the north, saith the Lord, and they shall come and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem. To what? what are, they're coming to Israel to confront Israel. The minute after... God tells Jeremiah, this is your calling to uproot, to tear down, to rebuild, all that stuff. That's when, then the next thing is, now go to Israel and go tear down their altars. This is an image of the whole thing he was just saying. This is what you're called to do, Jeremiah. When they come and say, why are you speaking this hard, these hard words? Everything is fine. We know God. He's going to tell them, no, no, you don't know God. No, I'm here to uproot the things that keep you away from God and keep you thinking that you know God still. To, to take down religion. There was religion in their day because they thought the things they were doing was honoring God by honoring other gods and doing the sexual perversion and all these things. Whatever, they still thought, because I go to the altar, because I go to the temple and I do this, I'm still loved by God. And we're do this today. But God is sending his people in there, his Calvary to do this, to get rid of this. Don't come against the ox that treads, what is it, treads the, the corn or whatever it is? What is it? Ox that grinds the corn, don't muzzle the ox. Don't muzzle, and, and also it's the one that isn't. Doesn't it also pull the thing and, and so that can it can grind up the ground? Yes. So don't muzzle the ox because we need the grinder there. Every time a hard word comes, don't run away. Run to it because then now it's time to build in you. Watchmen are going to watch out for spirits that are coming into the church. God will give them dreams. God will show them things. When false love is trying to enter the church, when, when, when false prophets are amongst the church, when false spirits and false doctrines, God will have them nail it in season and out of season. They always give a word in season, and they're never out of season. Even if, they're out of, out, out, even if things are out of season, they're always in season, in the right timing. They don't just speak words and, and preach words and things or speak whatever just, you know, for fun or just to seem, to seem like, hey, I'm doing something, right? You know, I've been out for a week, but here I am. No, they are, they are coming to nail something that's going on right now. They don't just, see, see there's, there's a difference. Some will come and build, apostles will come and build, whoever, pastors, even teachers will come and build upon you. But prophets, they come at that right moment when something is not right, when something's stopping you from going into the next season, into your next to whatever God's trying to do, they nail what needs to be, out of, be put out of the way. They nail what God is, is now delivering you from. Because God will, 
This, see, we're all going through a road of deliverance, our road of Damascus, God showed me, too. Many people don't, don't think they have deliverance, but it's a, it's a process, baby. It's a process. Mindsets need, still need to be, mindset strongholds still need to be broken off, intentions, good intentions that, that seem, seem like God, but they need to come out too. Ways that we thought, think are okay, they're not okay. Things that we come against that are actually holy, they, there's, you know what? People think they're, you know, whatever. I know we're supposed to, God says, it says, be perfect as I am perfect. And he's raising us up into that perfection. But there's still, needs, there's still a process of time. For Cain, there was a process. For Abel, there was a process. And one didn't keep his heart right, and the other did. And you see the results. One was received by God, and one was not. If you do well, sin will not be lying at your door. If you do well, your deliverance is coming. And I will utter my judgments against them, touching all their wickedness who have forsaken me and have burned incense on other gods, worship of, of works that on their own hands. Thou therefore gird up your loins, arise, speak unto them that I command. Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound thee before thee. It was, he was even rebuking the prophet there. Don't be confound by, what, by their faces or how they do because you're going to be held accountable and the blood's going to be on your hands. Prophets will have blood. Apostles will have blood on their hands if they don't speak what they need to speak. So don't come against them. Because if you come against them, you're tempting them to come against God. Because he says, if you do this, if you don't tell, tell them what I, I... God trusts prophets and apostles to, to speak what he's... That's why he made them who they are. Because he trusts them. So don't, make it, don't, don't come against them because they have their own accountability to stick to. If they don't do what they're supposed to do. And even there was, even I even had a moment this week where God wanted me to put something on social media. God said, don't be a coward. Don't cower to, these, to the people that are coming against. Don't think of what the people are going to say and how the people are going to uproar. Just say what I say, and I will back you. See, true fivefold ministers, God backs them. He brings signs and wonders, and there's always power if the people receive. If the people are not receiving, and that's a lot of the times. And that's why God will send prophets to hard ground. Because they're there to tear it up. If you're a prophet listening right now, God is, don't be discouraged. Because God has called you to the hard, hard hearts. He's called you to rip it up. He's called you to take people and get them into the presence of God. Many people are not in the presence of God because their heart is hard. If we're not feeling the presence of God, the anointing, something is up. And we need to even repent today. And even after, after this message, we can come to God today and, and say, you know what, Father? I don't feel your presence, but you know what? I want anything out of the way right now. We even say right now, Father, we want anything out of the way right now. Uproot anything. Show, show us what it is that's in your way that's blocking your presence. I even feel the presence of God right now saying that. And I thank you, Lord, that you rip, uproot everything. The days are coming, declares the Lord, when I will plant the kingdoms of Israel and Judah with the offspring of people and animals, just as I watched over them to uproot and tear down, uproot and tear down, and to overthrow, destroy, and bring disaster, so I will watch over them to build and to plant, declares the Lord. There it is again. Jeremiah 31, he tells them again. Oh, that's, this is your calling, Jeremiah. Uproot, build, destroy. They're coming to take the false gods in the church and just smash it on the ground and take a hammer to it. They bring the hammer of his word. They bring the, they bring the sharp sword of swords, and their sword is on fire. And they will catch you on fire if you submit. That's the prophet's reward to be on fire. Three kings. Don't call it a hard word of the Lord of the Lord anymore. Don't call it a hard word anymore. Call it the word of the Lord. Mm -hmm. See, when we call it the hard word, that's that's that automatically puts us back and says, uh, uh, when we should be going clinging to it. We should be clinging to it. Like John the Baptist day when he was making the way of repentance, this is what it is like for a prophet to come in your midst, is to make the way of repentance. And what was he preparing them for Jesus? So John the Baptist was here in the water calling everybody to repentance, to prepare the way for Jesus. For what? We never talk about that in the church. What was he making, preparing the way for? He was preparing the hearts of Israel so that when Jesus came, there would be no hard hearts and they would receive from him. There is the calling of an apostle and prophet right there. Apostle comes in the land, or even just God is trying to 
infiltrate his people, and God sends a John the Baptist, a voice crying out of the, in the wilderness, a prophet, to come and tear up the hearts and, and call everybody to repentance. That when Jesus comes, now he can come and be effective. Because it, it said that Jesus went into certain cities and they did not receive it, and he could do no mighty thing. He could do no miracle. He could not move in power. Not because he couldn't, but because they wouldn't, because God is a gentleman. He won't come in and just do whatever. He, will, he wants the heart to be submissive and wanting. He doesn't want robots. He doesn't want dolls. He wants people that want it, that want to submit, that are not just sitting in the church in the pews and the seats because their mama or daddy told them or because they just don't want to go to hell. He wants people that want the bridegroom. That's why you're called the bride, because you want a husband, not in the flesh, but God, to be the very husband, to be the very light to you, to your city. That is why we're here. That is why we do what we do. And that is why we listen to the word of the Lord. Because we want more of God. If you're sitting there all day because you're fearing hell, guess what? You're not going to get more of God. All you're going to do, and you're never going to get delivered. Because you're always doing things just to be better. But God wants, is, is here in the restoration business. So you never get better because you never come close, get close to God. When, he, when God restores you, you, we become close to him, but we're just doing, many of us just do things because we want to be right so we won't face the consequences. But we don't do things because we want, we want our, our Lord and Savior to appear. A pure in heart will see God. Do you want to see God? Do you want to see God? Do you want to hear God? The pure in heart. We need to tear up the hard ground. We need to uproot. We need to tear down. We need to destroy that makes that, to everything that makes us impure. All of our impurities. Be, dis be encouraged today to, to no longer run from your impurities, to no longer run from death that brings life, but to run from death so that we can have life. I'm telling you today, if there's anything that God convicts you of in this room tonight, today, or, or on YouTube or whatever, I'm telling you, run to it. Cling to it. Because he's ready to deliver you from it. Everybody can stand up. Deuteronomy 18, 20 through 22. And this is one of the main ones I wanted to get to. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, the prophet. He didn't say the false prophet. He said the prophet that presumes to speak in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or he shall speak in, in the name of other gods, even the prophet shall die. He's talking about a prophet, someone who is a prophet, but... Ends up speaking from another God or, or speaking presumptuously. It says presumptuous right, right here. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know what... See, so, so you're going to tell me God, a, a prophet can speak like this. So how am I going to know when he's, he's speaking a false prophecy or, or, or a real prophecy? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord to know if his, to know if his word is right. If the thing follow not... Nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. Did it say that is the thing that makes him a false prophet? Why do we always say that? A prophet can miss it. And I believe people, I've, over the years, they have missed it. But there's, there's people that we need to give grace to and, 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 and hope and pray that they repent because they will start, because a real prophet will start to become a false prophet. Because they're no longer going to come. They may have come from God originally, but now they're coming from Baal or they're coming from Jezebel or whatever. But false prophets are those that were never called to be a prophet, that call themselves prophets. They call themselves apostles, but you know that they're not. The ones, if you have to call yourself an apostle or prophet to be an apostle or prophet, you're in trouble. God calls people. God calls their name. He knows their name. He knows their way, and he calls them. Now, if they get off, they get off. You better, that, that, we just better pray that they repent. And there's false prophets, there's prophets that miss it, and there's prophets that are always on track. That is the thing which the Lord has spoken, but the prophet has spoken presumptuous, so presumptuously, thou shalt not be afraid of him. Presumptuously, meaning like assuming. Or, 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 or premature or whatever. About, maybe they have something in the heart. The enemy comes, gives them a dream, whatever, messes with them. That's why God is, has groomed his prophet and is grooming prophets now 
so that there would be nothing in their heart that would make them, that would lead them to get off. And yeah, of course, there's going to be people that when they speak a word and it doesn't come to pass, they're a false prophet, but then there's people that speak a word and it didn't come to pass because maybe they, their, their feelings got involved, their thoughts got involved, whatever got involved. And I just, like I said, again, I'm not talking about everything that's going on out there. I don't even, God never told me anything about it. And I'm thankful God didn't tell me anything about it because most of these guys are shaking in their boots. Most of these guys are apologizing. I don't know. But I know that I will only speak the word of the Lord and not the word of my lusts. That's what we need to be like. We need to, we need to only be hard-pressed that even if I don't have anything to say or whatever, I will only speak when it's the Lord. But in the body of Christ, see, it's a safe place. See, at the same time, it's a safe place. And when we're amongst the real body of Christ, there's grace. That's why I said if one prophesies, hear and judge, there's grace. And then if there's repentance, there's mercy. Now, Ephesians 2, 19, I'm going to just go through a couple scriptures, and then, and then we're just going to be done. Now, therefore, ye no more strangers, foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints of the household of God, and are built upon the foundation of the apostles and prophets. And the sensationalists say, well, the prophets have ceased, and the gifts have ceased, and the apostles have ceased. There's no more healing. There's no more miracles. But then you read in the book of Revelation, what is, which is the future, right? Where... When it's talking about the harlot Babylon and the lady that rides the beast, God says he will avenge her for you, ye holy apostles and prophets. He was talking about apostles and prophets in the, in the book of Revelation. So if there's apostles and prophets in the book of Revelation, and we say we haven't even touched the book of Revelation yet, how are we going to say there's no apostles and prophets anymore? And he said, and if there's false prophets, why can't there be real prophets? If the gifts never cease, then why do we got to watch out for false prophets? Then why, don't, why wouldn't we just say, there's no prophets, you can't do that. You can't prophesy, you can't come and do that, apostle, whatever. But they're real. But we, we've, cessationists have become so offended with the church that they just say, you know what, they're, it's all a bunch of malarkey, it's the charismatic movement, all this stuff, because they've got offended at people that have called themselves apostles and prophets but are not. But why can't it be that we know who they are and we find who the real ones are? And, and I get it. Many people... I've been, have become offended, have, have grown to this movement and called it everything charismatic that moves because, well, I don't, know, I don't see any true, true one out there, so it must have ceased. Now they're actually adding to the word of God, saying, because it says here that there are apostles and prophets that are called to raise up the church. That's the word of God. I am believing the word of God. That doesn't mean I'm charismatic because I believe the word of God. It says that there's apostles and prophets, there's gifts, healings, so, and it says they will do greater than me. He was talking about believers, that signs and wonders shall follow them. So how have they ceased if he said, I'm supposed to walk in these things? No, it's because people, th those people don't see it in their own life, so they don't think it's, it's, it can exist. And every time they see something move, they, get they say, oh, it's now they, that they're getting trouble of blaspheming the Holy Ghost because they've seen so much Kondalini and wrong spirits. They see the Holy Spirit... And it's like, oh, that's just like these guys over here. That's just like them. That's just like the false church. Because it may look similar or it may look like the same thing to them, but it's a test of spirits. How can you test the spirit in the flesh? Test the spirits amongst you. Did it tell you how to test the spirit? Well, then people could say, well, the word of God. Test it by the word of God. Test it by this. Test, you know, if he does it. No, how about the Holy Spirit is supposed to bear witness that you are the child of God? And why can't it bear witness that this brother or this sister is the child of God? Or this brother or this sister is the prophet of God or apostle of God? See, we know these people by the Spirit of God. Everything in the, in the church works by the Spirit of God. He confirms, he affirms, he shows who's of who and who's not. There's no way to tell because you can be looking at a person that's just an error and they are of God. You can be looking at of a person that's speaking the right words, but they're not of God. See how crazy it gets? It's like, whoa, whoa he, he could speak a right word and still, yeah, they could, I'm telling you, there are people out there that just copied other prophets and spoke their prophecies just so they can get more platform, and they could be right, they could be wrong, and if they're right, that doesn't mean they're real. That doesn't mean they're true. This is what they do. They plagiarize so they can seem like, they, hey, I'm with them. I'm with the holy apostles and prophets. A profane thing, acting like it's 
it's whatever. And God, I'm not saying what anything, whatever. God is going to use any, everybody, anybody he wants. He's going to use the jawbone. But eventually he throws the jawbone away. He throws the mouthpiece. The jawbone is the mouthpiece. He throws it away and he says, you know what? Samson is, is the one. Samson is, 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 the, is, the, is my guy, not the jawbone. Even though the jawbone may have produced a little life out of it and a little water, Samson is the child of God. He's the thing that I'm not just using, but I'm working with and I call my son or my daughter. You are the thing that he's using, but, and not, but not just using, but family, that he's, that he's your father and you're his son. Not just somebody who's a son of the devil, but being used. Even Jesus told the disciples, yeah, listen to the Pharisees. Listen to them. Whatever they say, they're saying right things. But they have no mercy or, or love, and, and they, 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 they make the little ones stumble. So God could use them to instruct the law. And God showed me another thing. He said, you know, about these people that say prophets, all that, they're all gone. It says, in no way have I come to abolish the law and the prophets. Not that we're under the law now, but I've come to fulfill it. I've come to fulfill the, the law, and I've come to fulfill and bring prophets that are from above. And not these prophets that are before you that, that are not from above, they're from below. So what are they going to say to that one? I want to know. Two Corinthians, or sorry, Ephesians 4, 11, 32. And I'm only doing all this because I want you to know that how, I want you to have confidence because there's so many vipers and people with venom in their mouth that will poison you. And they, will, and they will keep you away from the power of God. And that, this is their torment, that they can, can't feel the presence of God. They, can't, they don't even know what it's like to be in the Spirit. They don't know what healing is like because they say it's all done. It's all, it's all, it's all of, of the devil. But remember, there was people in Moses' time that was the one that, that made the water of blood and the one that brought the snake. And Moses also brought the snake in one and made the water blood. One was from God. One was not of God. They did the same thing. But how can you tell the difference? Only a spiritual man can tell spiritual things. Only a spiritual man can judge all things. That's what the Bible says. Because a spiritual man hears from God, and when he hears from God, he hears the heart of God and can move in mercy and grace to distribute what is of God. And I can tell, and I can, God gives a spiritual man authority to judge all things because when I'm moving by the Spirit, I'm moving by love because God is love. And God can trust me. He told them judge, he, said, he told them judge not, not because God is not, letting his children judge spiritually, but because they were judging by the flesh. And he's telling us, judge. He says, judge not. By, by, he's saying two things to us. Judge not, but you can judge. Flesh don't judge. Spirit can judge because the spirit is always right and, and true and faithful and just. I can judge. Even Jesus said, I don't judge by, what, by my mouth. I judge by what I hear. By, and what I hear, I say. And this is how we are to walk. What we're here, we hear the judgments of God and we distribute the judgments of God. That's why it says in the Bible, we're called, we're gonna, you know, everybody says we're going to judge the earth and blah, blah, blah. Well, guess what? It's happening now. Yeah. We're hearing the judgments of God. We're hearing the proclamations from God. And now we're speaking them. Yeah. Not that we could just have authority and just say, all right, I want Panama to sink into the sea. Because now they got a bunch of you know, stuff going on there. Or you know, I want China and this, this country or that country. Whatever. I can't just do that. No. It's by the Spirit, and I'm spirit, and I give what's spiritual. Ephesians 4.11, and then we're going to close. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists, some pastors, some teachers for the perfecting of the saints. This is what it's for. And for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. Till we all come out to the unity of the faith and to the full knowledge of the Son of God. Do you think the, the, the church is there now? I see a lot of disunity in the church. I see a lot of children in the church that have lack of knowledge and they're perishing. Unto a perfect man, unto a perfect man. Remember, be perfect as I am perfect and he's making us unto a perfect man. The same man that walked on this earth by the spirit is now, he's now making us an, a, 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 a shadow of that image. But we gotta get there. Are we there yet? Are we perfect? No. Is the church perfect? No. But we're removing spot by spot, wrinkle by wrinkle. To a perfect man, to the major of the statue of the fullness of Christ, that we thenceforth be no children tossed to and fro, 
And this is the, basically the key verse. And carried away with every wind of doctrine by the sleight of man's hand, a cunning craftiness whereby they lie and wait to deceive you. This is what a prophet's going to do. They are going to make sure these cunning men, the sleight of man's hand does not get in your way. Make sure that it does not get on your mind. Make sure that you're no longer too tossed to and fro. Stop rejecting them and start accepting them because they're here to keep you on the rock. That when the storm comes, and I had a dream that, the, that there was a storm coming, and it, but there was sunlight in the back, like as if there was going to be light after the storm. And there was a storm coming, and I was on, a, on, a, on, a, on, on land with these, on, a, on like an island, and I felt like I was with the remnant, and I felt like something else was going on, and there was somebody hurt, and people were taking care of the person, but it was the remnant, and we were on an island alone, and a storm was coming, and I could see I was on the beach, on this beach, and there was waves crashed, there was like big waves too, and they were crashing down, and then the storm was coming, and I was like, I almost got like this fear, like, oh my God, there's a storm coming, and we're on an island. And then the storm was coming, but then the storm, the storm dissipated into the waters. And I could see, when I looked into the waves, and as they were crashing, I could see, see the storm cloud in the waves. And it would crash and, and come, but recede back into the water. And then I, I almost basically knew exactly when I woke up what it was. And that there's storm, there may be a storm coming. There may be storms even coming. But remember, it says the water is the world. And it may affect the world, but God is going to, we're going to be hidden in Christ. We're going to be hidden in the cleft of the rock. God is going to protect his children in this time. God is going to keep us, he's going to keep, remember he said he, some of the, the, the seven churches, their promise was that they would be kept in the time of trial, in the time of tribulation. We're not going anywhere. It's not going to be an old rapture thing until it's all said and done. So we need to get out of this rapture thing too, and that's what prophets have come. Why do you think that the, 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 the false rapture thing has been so broken in the church now and so shattered? It was such a big thing back then in the 80s, 90s, whatever. And now it's been shattered. Why? Because apostles and prophets have come and torn it down and torn it down until there's nothing left of it. And you still see a little bit here and there. The rapture. I'm with you. And everybody just comes like dogs. I mean, whatever. I know people are crazy. Whatever. They come like dogs and, and whatever. You know, they're not right for doing that or whatever. But they've shattered this, this thing. And God is shattering things. Doctrines and, and revelations that apparently say they're from God so that they would no longer be a, a stronghold over the church. See how that rapture thing was a stronghold over the, over the church, and now it's not. But we're going to be in the tribulation. We're going to be protected in the midst of it. We're going to have power like never before. And no matter what happens this month or whatever, either way, God is not trying to make a land great again. He's trying to make his church great again. That's what he keeps telling me, and that's what I, all I care about. I don't care if whatever this... You know, whatever you see on these streets, all I care about is that we, the anointing increases in us, that we come together in the unity of faith and the full stature of Christ. And I thank you, Father, today that you would seal this word, Father, that you would set us free tonight. Like I said, come up if, you, if there's anything that you feel. If you just want to get your heart right, if you're not feeling the presence of God, today is the day of salvation. Today is the day of repentance. Today is the day of purity. I want to walk out this door with a pure heart. I want to walk out this door with a clean heart. I want my intentions to be clean. I want my mind to be clean. I want my everything to be clean. Thank you, Jesus. Prepare the way of the Lord and make us right with you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen.